Hey guys, so in this lesson I'm going to go ahead and show you how to change the colors of multiple controls at the same time. So let me just go over here to create NURBS primitives and make a circle. And I'm just going to go ahead and press Command D or Control D if you're on Windows and duplicate it. So sometimes I go ahead and see like let's say you want to change this controller's color. But first off, why would you want to change a controller's colors? You might be asking if you're if you're new to rigging. Um, usually whenever you're making like a character rig, like let's say a biped just to make things easier, it has the arms, the legs, and everything like that, you don't want to keep the standard color that Maya gives out whenever you make a control. You want to have it as organized as as clean as possible. So typically the left side of the character is blue and the right side is red. Uh, just to differentiate and for it to look better, a better appeal for the animator whenever they're animating your rig. Um, and then the middle is just between white, green, it just depends really on the studio that you're working with. But a rule of thumb is right is red, left is blue. So let's say I want to change this to red, this controller right here. I go over here to the right hand side where it says attribute editor. I'm just going to go to the transform node of the controller and go scroll down, go to display, scroll down again and go to drawing overrides and then turn on enable overrides. This way whichever color that you put this little scroller in that's the color that it transforms to. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click red right here and notice the controller changes to red, the controller. So now this controller is changed. Now the thing is let's say you want to change like multiple controllers. So Scene 2 is pretty easy because you just select the other one, turn enable overrides, and go to red as well. And that way you already have two controllers with the color that you wanted. But just to make things a little bit more difficult, I'm just going to press undo. Delete this controller right here. And I'm going to scale this guy down all the way. And I'm just going to go ahead and press command D or control D if you're on Windows select them again and all I'm doing is duplicating them and I'll explain why in just a second. So let's assume you have I don't know like 40 controls that you gotta change the colors for. Um, it's gonna be kind of annoying going one by one by one changing the colors of them so I'm just gonna show you a quick quick way to just change one of them and see like the actual code that Maya gives out for the color that you assign to it and in order to change all of them all at once. So all I'm going to do is start off with this controller over here and I'm going to go again attribute editor enable overrides and look for the red which is right here. So right now we have 40 controllers to be exact and one of them is only one red. But how do we go about changing all 39 of these in a quick simple way? So all you have to do is pretty much click these controllers over here all, all 39 of these and then lastly click the one that has the color so always remember click all of them I'm going to press control left mouse to deselect this one and then shift click it only reason I'm doing that is because I want this one to be at the bottom of the, the list that I'm about to show you so it does have to be the last one selected so what's this list I'm talking about so let's just go over here to windows on the top animation editors general editors and then we'll just go over here to attribute spreadsheet click that now let's make this guy much bigger so we can see it and we're gonna click this tab over here where it says all and now we're just gonna scroll this move it a little bit down it's a lot of controllers so I'm just gonna move this scroll all the way down because 39 is the one that's red and we're just gonna move left to right and we're gonna scroll all the way to the point that we see override enabled. You'll notice that only one of them is on and the rest are off. So I'm just gonna click one of them, scroll all the way to the top and then shift click the top one. Press one and then press enter. That turns it on. Zero's off, one is on in Maya. So now I'm just gonna scroll all the way down again and I'm gonna see here override color. 13 in Maya is the way of saying that it's red. So I'm just going to click this one over here and scroll all the way to the top and shift click, which is the same thing we did to turn it on, but now we're changing the actual code of the color. We're just going to type 13, press enter, because we saw all the way bottom here, 13 is the code for red in Maya. 
and we're just going to close this attribute spreadsheet. So right now they're selected, that's why you're seeing it white, but if I click in the viewport, you're going to notice all of them turn red all at once. So it's much easier, it's much quicker, and it's much more efficient to do it this way. Just change one controller, see the code that my assigns to it, if you don't know it by, by heart, which I doubt you will, because it's just a very weird code to remember by heart. And it could be used for any single color that you that you use here in the attribute spreadsheet. It doesn't matter which one it is. So you just change one, select all of them, deselect the one that actually has the color, and shift click it. Only reason for that again is because I want it to be at the bottom of the list of the attribute spreadsheet. So I know it's always going to be here instead of me like trying to find out which one's the one with my color. Just keeps things more organized. Once you find it, all you want to do is look for override enabled, which is right here, and the override color, which are the two main things that you'll be looking for. Now, if this is off the override enabled off, the color won't switch to the override color that you assign to it because you have to have the override on. So like, let's say I have this off. I'm clicking just a few of them just so you can see. You're going to notice that even though this has red on the bottom, but it has this off, it's not going to turn. So you do have to have enable overrides turned on and with the color code that Maya assigns to it. Um, I've seen a lot of people that I know, like colleagues and students as well, that they go one by one changing colors and it's just a very huge hassle when it comes to making rigs. And the most important thing about making rigs is being the best using your time the most efficient way as possible. So I found this trick just randomly trying to find out how can I change multiple controls of the left side of the body of my character and then the right side. And this was the quickest way. So it's pretty much just the attribute spreadsheet. You select all of them, make sure this one's the last one or whichever one has the color is the last one that you select. You turn on override enabled, you change the color, and that's how you go about changing multiple controls at the same time. So at the end of this video, I'm going to go ahead and show you my promo video, which is a 14 hour long course of just Maya rigging, which is solely just based on the beginner standpoint. And I go advance a little bit towards the end, teaching you little quick tricks and neat tricks that you can learn and tips like that in order to have a much easier flow for rigging and just understand rigging and the why rather than just how to do something I go a little bit more in depth and show you why you would do a certain thing so the why for this is pretty much just to to save time whenever you're rigging and just doing multiple at the same time rather than just going one by one by one changing the color you could do it all just by the going windows general attribute spreadsheet I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoy the other lessons I have on this channel. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Hey guys, my name is Daniel Lopez Medrano. I was born in Venezuela and live by Orlando now. I got interested in 3D back in 2009 when a cousin of mine was involved with a 3D school. Later in 2013, when I finished high school, I went to the same school he did. I found interest in rigging my last three months of my time there. When I learned rigging in the start, I just did it because I had to, didn't enjoy it at all, and was completely lost at times. But towards the last three months, I suddenly found a great love towards it and everything simply clicked and made sense. I started watching videos all over the internet involved with rigging as far as tutorials go and also demo reels of amazing riggers that inspired me even more. I was the go-to person in the entire school for rigging at this point. During my production, I would be asked to help on any rigs that weren't working, and even people in other classes would randomly come up to me to ask me for help in rigging without me even knowing them. It was an amazing feeling being known as the rigger of the school. I was talked about so much to the point that my academic director at the time, who was William Valgon, took me to his office and told me he had recommended me to a studio out in Sarasota, Florida to be their main rigger. I went out there, showed the team my reel, and basically had a job for my passion weeks before even graduating. I kept giving my 100% still in class no matter what, even though I knew I had to secure a job as a rigger. What I wanted to bring in this course is to show you guys that rigging is so much easier than what some people make it to be. If you understand the why you would do a certain thing, then it all makes sense from there. I will show you the fundamentals of rigging with ease, and not just give the tools and tell you their location, but as well give you guys ideas on how I would use that tool to make production go faster. Anybody with no experience at all with rigging can follow along and at the end of the course be a very well knowledgeable rigger that can even be able to show others. 
My main reason for this course is to take away that fear people have that rigging is the most complicated part of a production ever. It's truly simple, but only once you learn and understand the principles. I made this course as if I were showing one of those students that would randomly come up to me in school for help. It feels as if I'm right by your desk helping you out one on one. I'm positive you will get a lot out of this course and be confident in yourselves when it comes to rigging from now on. Very excited to start teaching you guys. Can't wait to see you in the first lesson.